How good does that sound, Pete? Oh, I missed it every time. I love it every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, welcome to the Bevs and Ballers podcast and the rest of the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, honestly, honestly, I just, I'm just too tired for the intro today. Um, but honestly, it was like, hey guys, welcome to the Best Border Podcast. We're number one sports podcast yeah. in the world, which is, which is facts. It's big facts. Um, yeah, bro. Like we just, we're just bringing, we're just bringing you guys. Uh, you know, all the, all the ballers in quarantine right now. I think, I think that's it. All of it. All of them. All of them. We're doing all of them. Every single baller you know, we're doing all of them. (laughs) 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 Name 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 one player, P. We're doing them. Who we doing? Uh, Lee Catamol. We're doing Lee Catamol. James Madison. Yeah, James James Madison. Madison. We're doing James Madison. We're doing Jose Basingua. We're doing the lot. <laughs> oh, oh bro. I do miss that music. Mate, do you know who the guest is today? I, you haven't even told me the guest. I haven't right now. even told I'm, you the guest. Right. I'm pretty sad right now for real. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the lowdown on the guest. You know you know Cherno Samba? Name sounds very familiar. So basically he had a wonder kid status at age fifteen. Um, okay. basically, well, basically, he used to play um for the St Joseph's Academy uh Blackheath when he was thirteen years old. He scored one hundred and thirty two goals in thirteen games. No, thirty two games. One hundred and thirty two goals in thirty two games at age thirteen. What type of number is that, bro? Wow. These are. Crazy, oh, crazy numbers. That is ridiculous numbers. So, oh my god. So, and then uh, he, after that, he made his way to youth level with uh, Millwall in England. Uh, he was picked as a fourteen-year-old uh, for England schoolboys, and at one stage, right. he was keeping Wayne Rooney out of the lineup for the England under seventeens. Different type of checkers. <laughs> You're keeping Wayne Rooney out. Different type of checkers. Bro, and Wayne wow. Rooney at that age was a baller at that as well. Do you know what I mean? So, so where he's been most prolific, um, he yeah. he had this whole thing of like this virtual versus reality kind of thing because you know on FIFA you have like um, when when you're on career mode you look for all like the uh, the the upcoming talent and you'll sign them with on the cheap because they have loads of potential yeah, yeah, yeah. in the future, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, on the two thousand, uh, the t- two thousand and one to, to the two thousand two version of Championship Manager, um, yeah, the program has basically um, assigned him like really, really high scores based on his like raw talent. Um, wow! And basically, that caused an extra like uh, level of hype around him. Um, like he was going to mm. be this mental player, and yeah. I think that's something you really struggle with, like that the, vir- sure. the, the 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 virtual reality version of himself versus yeah. the actual real version of himself, and he he felt the pressure to kind of live up to that. So that's something I really yeah, want to talk yeah, to yeah. him about, and and that's um a, and get his um, insight. That's a really interesting dynamic. Um, yeah, like, I couldn't imagine having like when so many people are saying something, it, it kind of takes you out of how you feel, and it's almost like you're you're, you're you kind of have to play on the level everyone else thinks you have to, rather than where you think you're going to think. It's, it's, it must be a lot, especially at a young age as well, but it would be interesting to, to get his insight on how he felt throughout That's that such whole a period. Weird thing, isn't it? Obviously, obviously. We've got to get him on. We've got to get him, got to get him, got to, to get him on, mate. We've got to get him on. We've got to get him on, man. So he's, really he's due to come on at 3 p.m. It's now 2.47, so we we we, we got time. We've got a bit of time, Pete. Um, oh, bro, you have to explain the setup to everyone and how this is going to work because. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. me and Pete can't do the interview together because um, 
due to technical <laughs> technical <laughs> difficulties, um, it's just that we record the podcast on a multi track. Um, yeah, and when 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 I'm editing the show, uh, I can't if 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 I have Pete and Cherno on 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 the same multi track, I can't edit pete's highs or lows and i can't edit the guest pete's uh the the, the guest yeah. highs and lows um so yeah so that's 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 pretty much why um so yeah unfortunately it would just be me <laughs> yeah which sucks be be because there. i feel like when we're both on we we both ask questions that are like personal to us in a way and it and it and it create like things that we personally would like to know and I think that creates a really yeah. well rounded show. Um we're we're, we're, I, we're, I, we're I, a great duo. We are. We are you know what I'm saying like two peas on the pod. <laughs> Literally <laughs> two peas on the pod. Two peas on the pod. Mate, that's a great two name the, for a new real, podcast. Listen, I am just four time name. I might be up to something. <laughs> hey Pete, should, 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 should we start another one? Two two peas on the pod? Bad. Side hustle. Let's just get another pod going. <laughs> Pete, bro, I have bro. to. I, I'm gonna call Mr. Cherno. Listen, have a, have a great chat with Cherno. Let him know that I'm not happy about this person <laughs> in that United situation. I will, mate. Right, I right. will. I will. And I bro, miss I'm, you already, I'm bro. Gutted, bro, I'm glad, but it'll be a good one. It'll be a good one. I know for sure. I know for sure. Hello, mate. You're right. It's Alex from the Bevs yeah, of Borders podcast. Yeah. How are you, Alex? Yeah, you're right, mate. I'm doing good, mate. Yeah, How are you keeping? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, mate. Oh, mate, it's a crazy time right now, isn't it? Oh, tell me about it. Bloody heat, mate. We can't even get out. <laughs> oh my god, dude, it's just crazy. I can't even believe this is a this it's is a situation, right? Do you know what I mean? It's just crazy. It's mental. I keep thinking I'm dreaming. One day I'm going to wake up and everything's over, mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is it. Because I've been out. Because I, I just had a phone call with um with the with the other host of the podcast. Uh, his name's Pete. Yeah. Um yeah. And we were just we were just saying how because obviously he, unfortunately he can't be on the show because uh yeah because of the way that the podcast sets up we can't get him on a separate yeah. audio track which is annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll just say, mate, like it's just crazy. It's mental. Yeah. I don't know what is going on, mate. Bro, honestly. it's crazy. But <laughs> I'm just really hoping some some good comes some good out news. of this. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I yeah, think, yeah. You know, it's the phrase is like every experience is a good experience. So, absolutely, um, absolutely. And there's no condition that's permanent. So you know, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Hey, mate, we'll I tell you, it's it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today, man. Nah, no worries, man. No worries. Pleasure having me. Absolutely, I'm honoured, mate. No worries. What's been What's been keeping you busy during this quarantine? Um, <laughs> just <laughs> loads of loads of films and just having really. Jobs. In a way, it's a good thing as well because I've been spending a lot of time with the kids as well. I've got two little two um two daughters, so I've oh, been yeah. messing about with them in the garden. So. It's been good. It's been mm-hmm. good. Um, done a lot of panic buying before, but um... oh, mate, the loo roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Loo roll. Why? Do you... Oh my <laughs> god! It's just <laughs> it just blows my mind, mate. So, yeah. mate, we've had we've had some crazy things. Like, so I was working yesterday, and some 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 customer was wanting seven bottles of cooking oil. <laughs> seven, mate. Seven. Yeah. Like, I, said, I, think... I I was what like, is he gonna do that? Yeah. literally, so I, I couldn't give him seven. Like, our limit's like three. And he was like, oh, so what was the essential? I was like, well, yeah, mate, like seven, <laughs> seven's ridiculous. Come on. Yeah, oh. I've come to a point now where I think now, yeah, there's no need for panic buying now. So nah. I've bought so many stuff and the missus, some of them gone off. So the missus just put them in the bin and she wasn't happy with that for that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was in a naughty corner for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not, yeah. and, and, and that's not ideal during quarantine, mate. <laughs> no, no, not at all, not at all. You can imagine, mate. <laughs> oh, mate. Yeah. So it's just, I think, firstly, I mean, yeah. Before we get into, you know, your, your, your career, I kind of want to, yeah, get your due to the current situation globally right now. I kind of want to get your yeah. insight into, um, you know, the behind closed doors of footballers right now during this global pandemic mm. like 
what yeah. if you were you know say back in your prime what would you be yeah. doing right now to stay fit stay healthy because obviously Absolutely. i mean yeah what mm. what would be what were your routine right now what how, how would you be keeping um, it, would be, it would be very 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 easy you know i'm sure you know they, we, we, they will get programs we would have we would have got programs of what we can do in the house so you just go in the back garden and just you know uh, wake up as early as possible, have your tea, your breakfast, whatever, and then get in the garden and just do some drills in there. So, um, so you would train, you 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 know you keep you keep yourself ticking and everything, but um, it's difficult doing it on your own, you know, because um, the motivation sometimes can be lacking. Um, so you know, and then repeating the same thing every day, you know, it can be a bit boring as well. <laughs> So yeah. Um, so yeah, but you just got to be professional enough to know. Look, it's not as I, as I said to you earlier. There's no condition that is permanent. So sooner or later, we'll get out of this and then get back to our normal lives. But um, yeah, so I'll just be taking over in the garden. You know, spending as much as time I can with the kids <laughs> and the missus. And um, yeah, and at this minute, to be honest, yeah, I just can't wait to get out, mate. Sick and tired of food. Yeah, <laughs> mate, one hundred percent, mate. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Because, like, obviously, players aren't going to be match fit right now. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's, no. It's, as much as you can be training, you're, you're yes. not, there's no way you, you're going to be match fit right now. Do you know Absolutely what I mean? Absolutely not. There's a big difference as well. And a lot of people, you know, uh, they don't realize this because you can be top shape fit. But if you're not match fit, you'll still, sh- you, you, you'll still struggle. So yeah. you need to be playing games. You need to be training with a football, training with, um, uh, uh, with your peers and everything like that. So, you know, you can do all the things you can want to do in the gym and in the garden and everything, but you, you're never, you're going to be no way in my fitness. So yeah. um, it'll be interesting times when we go back to football, how how they're going to react. And, and these these things are dangerous times though, because these are the times as well you pick up injuries because if you're not match fit as well, yeah, you, 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 can, you can tend to pick up injuries very quickly. So um, yeah, it's very, 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 very yeah. unusual. <laughs> how, how do you, because obviously football's getting a lot of stick at the moment. Um, yeah. You know, with obviously the the the, the Premier is at the top of the football pyramid, and there's yep. there's a lot of people pointing out that there's a lot of inequality in terms of the the concentration of uh, the finances at the top of the pyramid, and how that's mm-hmm. not being you know widely dispersed as it should have been. So do you mm-hmm. do you, do you feel that it's right to target footballers? No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. It's um. Like a skate goal for them, mate. Honestly, I don't like to get politics and that because yeah. it's just another kettle of fish. Uh, we can talk about that all day, which is not uh, fair criticism that to the footballers. And um, listen, I know some of my mates that are still playing. They're doing so so much to help behind closed doors that a lot of people don't know about. You know, they they they're giving out loads of charities, and even to myself, I've done things like that. But you don't have to always flag it out in the media or anything like that. There's so many of them that are doing that. So I think it was just a scapegoat for the footballers to um, say, right, because they've got earning so much of this money, they should be doing this and this and that. But they were always going to come back. I, I knew they would always, you know, they, they, you know, a lot of people don't realise footballers are also human beings and they have family, they have kids, they have brothers and sisters and moms and dads and everything. So they feel what everyone else would feel. And um, if you're in a better position to help somebody else, why not? And they were always going to come out and help out anyway. So I think um, it was a... Uh, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a, uh, yeah, it's it just one of them things. Yeah, it's no, mate. Honestly, I, 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 I completely agree with you. It actually, really frustrates yeah. me because yeah, cheap shot, cheap shot. It, bro, it, it is, it is, it is. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty of other sportsmen who are <laughs> who are earning tons of exactly. money, and it, it, it's just yeah. this classic stereotype yeah. that for some reason exactly. in in English culture we revert yeah. to and and point the finger exactly. at the uh, the footballers. And this is the thing, and this is it's funny you said that because I was talking to one of my mates about this as well. You know, you go to Germany, France, and all the, you don't hear all these things. No, nope. you don't hear all these things. So it's just us all the time. Just yep, go back to the footballers. It, you know, that's where the problem is. That's earning so much money. You know, it's it's just ridiculous, mate. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, nonsense. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's a, it's 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 really stupid. Because you yeah. got mate, you and got I, you got golfers, <laughs> you got Formula One drivers who are earning tons, <laughs> exactly, mate. Exactly, tons. Exactly. Bankers, uh, we can go on and go on. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, as you say, yeah. there's a lot of players who are doing stuff behind the scenes, donating Absolutely. charities, and already Absolutely. had affiliations with charities. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it, it was a cheap shot. It was a cheap shot, mate. So that's what I say. 
very cheap. Yeah, yeah. Right, mate. Yeah. Right. Let's let's get on to you. I want to talk about yeah. you. I want to talk about <laughs> your career and yeah. Um, and from basically zero to one hundred, really. So <clears throat> you know, so you <clears throat> were you were born in Gambia. Um, yeah, yeah. and you moved to England when you were six, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and mate, one stat that just blew my mind. I think you know exactly what I'm gonna say. <laughs> one hundred and thirty-two goals in thirty-two games. Yeah, mate. Yeah. What is that? What are those numbers? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, um, it was insane. Um, <clears throat> my strength was just to score goals. I just, I just love scoring goals at a very young age. Um, my dad was a goalie, so I remember he always used to say, look, when you're placing a ball, you always look for the bottom corners and low. So I always had that in my head. Um, yeah, it was under 13s at like Millwall, mate. It was just um, it was just my, my bread and butter. I just could score goals. I was scoring five, six goals a game. Um, my strength was to come deep because the ball turn and attack defenders. I was very explosive. So that helped. Um so um, yeah, scoring goals. It was just, it was just, as they say, it was a bread and butter for me. It was right? just part, part of your, part of your craft. Man, yeah, it's mental. Yeah, one hundred and thirty-two. Yeah. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, it was. I, I remember it was, a, it was a point where even the coaches said, "Right, try it out. Right, get let someone else scores now." You know what I mean? Oh like, my god! No <laughs> yeah, way. it was one of them. Yeah, exactly. So I'll see two players get to a bar line. I'm just waiting, waiting. Oh just come, my. Someone can just, you know, get a ball for them and let so that they can tap it in. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and what was yeah. it? What was it like? Because uh, because you were you were playing for the St Joseph's Academy, right? In in in, in Blackheath. Yeah, yeah. So that I went to school there. I went to school. So that was my secondary school. So yeah. I played for the secondary school as well, and then. But before that, it was um, well. We all started at a um, Oliver Goldsmith at my primary school, and uh, I remember there was a there was a um, school team. But then um, uh, they didn't pick me actually at first. They just you know they were short players, so it's like you you want to play. I went yeah, why not? <laughs> so turned up, uh, put me in go uh, put me on the bench, and then after I think the goalie got injured, so they put me stick me in goal. Stood there for about. 10, 15 minutes, didn't touch the ball. I thought, nah, I'm not staying here. So yeah. when the ball came to me, I just ran with the ball, beat everyone, scored a goal, never went back in goal, mate. So, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that was it. That changed it for me. And what was, so it, what was, was, um, it, what was it like growing up uh, in, that, in um, that area of London? It was tough. It was very hostile. It was very... Um, um, because I grew up in Peckham. It was um, a lot of gangs going on at the time, a lot of drugs going on at the time. And um, what helped me was football. Um, um, I remember I had mates that, you know, when I wanted to go trade, they were like, why are you going training for this? You don't hang out and stuff. But I knew where I wanted, I knew where my head was at. Yeah. I wanted to be a footballer. Yeah. So, um, um, but it was difficult. It was very, very difficult because you always, as a young kid, you know, with the influence, you know, um, there was a lot of gangs going, gangs related and a lot of drugs and, mm-hmm. you know, criminal acts and stuff like that. So, it was hard. It was it's hard. Such a, this me. is such a common yeah. theme, you know. It's that yeah. football is this mm. form of a, you know, it's a form of escapism for a lot of young people. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And when we interviewed um, Eddie Newton, who was the first ever yeah. black player to play for Chelsea, mm. Mm. you know, he was he we, he was involved in some things in the past, but it was his it was his football that that <clears> took <throat> over for him. He that was that was that got him off the streets. Mm. Um, mm. And that's, I yeah. that's such a common theme, and shows the the real power of football, um, absolutely, and what it provides, and and why it's so important that we invest in you know these mm. football schemes and grassroots football, uh, mm. in order to you know give 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 people another option, you know exactly, exactly, and yeah, and as you said, you know, um, for me, football is it was everything for me, and. Um, if it wasn't for football, I don't know what I would be doing at the time because, you know, I was young and, you know, you tend to get influenced very easily. And um, so luckily, uh, it was football that, you know, steered me away, mate. Definite. And then you went on to keep Wayne Rooney out of the lineup for the England, uh, the, the England <laughs> under-17s. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so it just kicked on from there, to be honest. Um, after I lived at we went to secondary school, and um, at this time, I was playing for um, uh, Mottenham Youth, which is was this my Sunday league club. Mm-hmm. And then that's when um, Millwall, Charlton, and West Ham were, were interested. So uh, my mom and dad said, "Look, uh, Millwall obviously is closer to us where we lived." 
and it's easier to commute, to drop you to training back and forth. So yeah. um, no brainer. And um, I was supporting Millwall anyway. So I said, yeah, we'll go with Millwall. So I went to Millwall and um, got my um, first England call-up at the, at the age of 15. But wow. um, I was um, I was always playing a year above my age. I used to play with the likes of um, David Bentley, uh, wow. Darren Bent, Glenn Johnson, because they're, year, they're, they're older than me. And then after when I was 17, I dropped down to my own age group, which was... Wayne Rooney and um, Wayne Routledge that, that that era. So um, yeah, incredible. <laughs> Good times then, mate. Good times. What was, what was that like? Because I feel like at that at that time we really they, it was it was the golden age almost coming through. Really, there wasn't it. It felt like yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, it was it was brilliant for me. It was um, the best thing. You know, getting called up for England was the happiest moment of my life. To be honest. Um, and you know, like I said, when I dropped to my age group and. Even at that time, players like Wayne, you could see straight away he's become somebody. I remember we yeah. had a um, we had a game against Slovakia, and he was supposed to be on the bench. And um, so um, the England manager, who is my England manager, Dick Bate, who passed away two years ago. Um, yeah, it's sad. He, so you know, sad. We'll, we'll come into that. Yeah, we'll come into that soon anyway. Um, but yeah, so he took he, he named the team, and Wayne was meant to be on the bench, but a day before the game. But he trained so well that Dick had to change the team again and put him up with me up front. And that's what I knew. Well, he, he, you know, he, you could see straight away he's going to become someone. What was it like playing with Wayne? It was good. It was very good. He was, um, he was a um, very, very hardworking player. And um, yeah, he was, he was, it was a pleasure to play with, definitely. So he has partnered us up on field time and then sometimes I'll play as the lone striker. Yeah, and he'll be on a bench. Because <laughs> <laughs> mate, you, 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 you had that that won the kid status, didn't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. from a from a very young age, and was yeah. that was that something that you really struggled with that to to kind of um bear the weight of on your shoulders, yeah. so to speak? Absolutely, absolutely. Um. Look, I was 15 and I was tipped to win the World Cup for England in 2006. That is pressure. Mental. That is pressure. Uh-huh. That is mental. But, um, you know, I was only young and I was tipped to win the World Cup. So you can imagine why I was feeling. It was, um, it was, it was really, 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 really str- um, um, hard for me to deal with because the whole nation was talking about you at that young age. So what happened was the pressure got to me. I was tipped to win the World Cup. I was um, talked about so much in the media and everything else. And that was the time, the period that when my second game against Wales, I went to um, uh, four teams were interested, which was Liverpool, Manchester United, Leeds and Arsenal. And I went to all four, all four clubs. And the, 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 the club that stood out for me, even though I'm a Manchester United fan, I, um, I picked Liverpool because of the way they conducted themselves, the way they showed me how interesting they were with me. Everything was just wow. perfect fit. Yeah. And um, so when I remember when Joao Julie, who was the manager, asked me, he was my favorite yeah. player. And that, at that time, it was Michael Owen because he was bursting into the scene doing stuff. Yeah. He was really good for club and country. So um, he was my, my role model at the time. So they got Michael to um, have a chat with me and show me around and spoke to me and said, look, it would be great to come here to play with you and stuff. So all this time that was going on, you can imagine what I was feeling as a young kid. So when the deal didn't happen, it just crossed my world, mate, Alex. Absolutely just destroyed me because um, I think that depended on how my career panned out in the end because I was struggling after that. I couldn't cope with it. Absolutely, mate. I can... Yeah. Mate, this is... If you... I mean, it's almost the the kind of perfect yeah. storm for you to feel like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You've got, you've got, <clears throat> you know, the I mean, the, the English media are so so powerful, yeah. and you've got <laughs> and you've got that. You've probably got fans you're meeting mm. on the streets talking about you. You've yeah, got probably yeah, your family, yeah. your friends yeah. talking to you about yeah. it. And you're hearing so many yeah. different things, and exactly. it must be so hard exactly. to focus it on was. your football and you know kind of that yeah. tunnel vision and mate as you say you know you are only human um, exactly and, and I was a kid yeah, bear in mind I was only 15 geez. you know and no, it's, that's not <laughs> I've got my own kid now and my, my, my first born she's 13 she, well she thinks she's an adult now anyway but, um, <laughs> <laughs> exactly 
But I, for me, I don't think you're an adult until not even eighteen, until twenty-one. That's my that's my opinion. Mate. So imagine when I was at the fifteen years of age, going through all that. But having said that, as well, the people that were around me weren't necessarily the best for me because um, even at school, even the mates that I had, nobody was telling me the right thing. Everyone was telling me what I wanted to hear yeah. because they didn't want to upset me or anything. At these times, I was sponsored by Nike and um, I could go to Night Town in Oxford Circles and just get anything that I want. So I used to take my mates there, family members, you know, all sorts of people and just get thousands of thousands, tens of thousands of stuff. Oh just giving word. it to them and stuff like that. So I feel that they didn't want to upset me or whatever, but nobody would tell me what to do. They would always tell me what I wanted to hear which was necessarily not, was not best for me. And that didn't help. Did and you even, clock on to that at the time or is that something that you've started to see in hindsight? I started seeing hindsight. I started seeing hindsight because at the time I couldn't see it. I, I didn't see anything, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was just, you know, um, they didn't tell me what, 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 what was the right thing. What was the right thing. And um, even at Millwall as well, sometimes at my own football club, they were just always trying to please me trying to, you know, trying to, yeah, that's fine, trying to, yeah, no worry about it. Whereas, you know, inside, if they just, just, you know, told me what to, you know, the right thing, and then I would have, it would have, it'd have been all right. It would have been all right, you know. Um, and the, the the thing, having said that, um, when when I when the deal didn't happen at Liverpool, and that broke my world, and I said I didn't want to play football for six months. I won't, I don't want nothing to do with football. I'm quitting everything, so I stayed out for six months actually they didn't play football at wow. all so yeah I was just getting out with my mates and just playing in a park and just hanging around and stuff yeah yeah, so, yeah. Um, almost, almost yeah. like expecting someone else to come through or yeah yeah just just no I just didn't want nothing to do with football just really just, just wanted to yeah, stop yeah yeah just stop just wanted to quit you know wow. but then got my family and friends to say look you've got God given talent just go back and then Mill came and spoke to me and spoke to my mom and dad as well and um and then we we patched things up. So I went back having, but going back, my appetite was gone already. I I lost appetite for the game. So my motivation was, if I do stay back in this game, all I care about was after football, I am financially stable for myself yeah. and my family. And that was the motivation after that. Did you when you went back to Millwall? Was there um mm-hmm. was there? Did you feel a lot of resentment towards the club that they? had potentially stopped you from moving to Liverpool? Or they did stop you from, from getting Absolutely. that move? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I remember uh, two weeks before I knew what was going on. Like everyone knew. Millwall knew. Liverpool knew. My mum and dad knew. My agent knew what was going on. But I didn't. So after two weeks, then my mum, my dad called me from upstairs to the kitchen. I said, look, I don't know if you've noticed how your mum's been lately. So I said, yeah, I don't know. She's not been her best lately. What's wrong with her? Yeah, well, what's happened is the deal's off. You're not going to Liverpool. And Alex, I just dropped on the kitchen floor, just started crying my eyes out like a little boy. Absolutely just tears coming out of my eyes everywhere. So that's when I said, right, they want nothing to do with football. But then, what well, something bizarre, as I said earlier, was I, I, while I was crying, I said, right, if this is how football is and I do stay back in this game, I want to make sure I'm financially stable after football. I was yeah. 15, Alex. I shouldn't be even thinking Mate, that. That is time. mental. <laughs> that is mental. mental. <laughs> Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So, most, 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 <laughs> most fifteen-year-olds now are panicking about which, 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 which TikTok they're gonna make next. Do you know what you I mean? Go. Exactly, exactly. And you're, oh mate, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So yeah. So and when what, I went back to me, yeah, go on. No, go on. No, go on. <laughs> yeah. So when I went back, it was um, um, I was bitter. I was, I was angry. I was hurt. So as I said earlier, the appetite was gone anyway. I didn't want. I didn't have love for football. So, but having said that. What I should have done was knuckled down. I was only 15, so I haven't even started my career be finishing. I could have knuckled down, carried on doing what I was doing, and yeah. maybe that deal would come back. Yeah. But I went back and I didn't try hard enough. So yeah, I can, you know, is a, a shared relate, uh, responsibility here. You, have it, you know, saying that I, I, I could have looked after, I could have been looked after better. Mm-hmm. Having said that, I should have looked after myself as well and apply myself properly because if there was to do 10 doggies, I wanted to do four and just pull out and set my leg. Yeah. If it was to do shooting practice for about half an hour, I just wanted to do two minutes and say, right, I'm going in. Gym session, I didn't want to do it. So all this, it affected me because I didn't apply myself. So part of the responsibility is or part of the, the, the struggle and the, and, the, and the, 
uh, situation that was in, I, I put that up on myself because I should have planned myself properly. But do you think it was, because I'm a, I'm a great believer in that you are the mm-hmm. sum of your surroundings. Do you think mm-hmm. the, the toxic culture within football kind of influenced, you know, the, your, your mentality? Um, you could say that, but then again, I, I at the time I was only young. I was I, I, I didn't even think of anything. All I was yeah. thinking about was my 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 dreams being squashed. But having said that, as I said, I should have still applied myself. I was only fifteen, so it's not like I've started my career to be to finish. So you know, don't cut corners, don't cut corners. Yeah. And um, in life, there's no shortcuts in life, let alone in football. You know, and and you know saying everything that I say in terms of if I had the people around me that were better for me, my coaches at Millwall and everything else, but part of it was myself as well. I have to, I have to blame myself as well, you know, because if I apply myself, then it would, have, it, it would have been better, you know. It would have been a little bit, a lot better than what, what it was. Yeah. And but yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you have any regrets on that part? Or are you, are you um, almost happy that happened because maybe you wouldn't be where you are today because of that? I know it's yeah, very cliche, yeah, can, but I can, think it might yeah, be true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can say that. But yeah, if I have any regrets, that's the only regret that I have, which yeah. is to, there is no shortcuts in life. Whatever you do and whatever you do, you've got to do it 210%. There's no shortcuts in life, let alone in football. So um, if I have any regret, it will be that. I should have applied myself properly and give 210%. Because I think what you are, what you're describing from what from what I can hear is very natural, and I think mm-hmm. a a lot I say you put ninety percent of people in your situation probably would have mm. been the same because yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's very very <laughs> normal that to me sounds yeah. normal. There's been times where mm. you know I've obviously not on the same scale as yours, <laughs> but when you think oh yeah I'm 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 good at this, well I don't need to do the mm. other things that other you know to to, to be even exactly. better and, and, and exactly. be more. I think exactly. what you're describing is very exactly. very normal. Um, yeah, yeah. And, but I think and that's just... how I felt. That's how I felt because I because I was superior than everybody else. I could score goals left, right, and centre. I could do what I was doing. Yeah. So the other players, no disrespect to them, but they couldn't. You know, they couldn't come near me. They couldn't touch but, you. Yeah, they couldn't touch me. But what I needed was my coaches to even push me more. Yeah. But because they didn't want to upset me either. It was like, oh, that's fine, China. No worries about it. you know. It, it didn't help me. It didn't help. It didn't help. So um, yeah. One of those. <laughs> and is there is there anything that new experience during the um during during that period with uh you know the what the let me let me let me describe it as the the football system you know obviously the agents and all the is there because that that's something you know that we hear a lot as football fans that agents you know run the game or ruin the game and the way the transfers work is all very. And there's uh, a lot of things coming right now about um, the new um, Netflix series, uh, uh, The Sunderland Till I Die, and there's a lot about that yeah. um, with contract yeah. negotiations. And I think there's a striker yeah. called like, Josh Madger, and he's a lot yeah. of stick, and he's, he's uh, like saying, oh, I'm just focusing on football, my agent's dealing with the matters. And it just seems to be... Do, do you think that could that has a negative impact on the game? Um, uh, for me, you know, even what I'm doing now is, 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 is something similar to help the next generation of imagine talents to not go through what I went through. Now, you do have, in any works of life, you do have the good ones and you do have the bad ones. Mm-hmm. That's just life. So, the agents, there are there are some of them that are really good, that will run the race with you, that will yeah. do the, the, the necessary things that you need and to be, you know, proper to do what you need to do on a pitch. But some of the others, they just, I call them the transactional agents. Yeah, you know where they come in, do it deals, and just forget about you. Yeah. And until another deal comes, hello, Chano, you're right, mate. Yeah, we have to do this, and there you go again. So there are good and there are bad. Yeah. So it's it's up to you, the person, to identify who is good and who is bad by having the trust, having the relationship, having to talk to them properly and see what they're about. Because you can see through you you can um, see through people very easily. Yeah. So um, yeah. So for me. Um, if you do have the right agent, then there's nothing wrong with that. He's got the best interest for you. But there are some agents that are just there to just, you know, take as much as they can from you. And for me, my time, it was more of that because I was, you know, I had people offering me cash, money, 
all the time. And I remember there was an agent that came to my mom and dad's house and offered him 50 grand. I'm talking about how long ago was that? That's a lot of money at that time. But, and at the time, my dad was only earning less than 1,500 pounds a month. So he could have easily said, yep, no yep, problem. Thank you, I'll yeah. take this. You look after my son. But my dad was a principal man and said, look, if I did that, that means I'm betraying my son. So he turned it down. Actually yeah. turned it down. Yeah. You know, I said to him, now, nah, Dad, you are, what's wrong with you? You should have taken that, mate. <laughs> we <laughs> laugh about it now, right? <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but on a, on, a, on a serious note, but he, he didn't take it. You know, he said, look, I just felt that's betraying my son. If anything, I should be paying you to look after my son, not you to pay me to look after my exactly. son. That didn't sit well with me. Exactly. And that's the principle of the man. Money, yeah. money often plays a smokescreen, doesn't it, in these, yeah, in these exactly. situations? Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so it is, it, is, it is a difficult one. But, yeah, there are top, top, top good agents out there. And, um, you know, you just got to be careful. That's all. And this is why, you know, we'll get in touch and that way. This is what I do now to help the next generation of emerging talent, to show them, yeah. you know, um, you know, there's not a better person who can teach these kids because I've been there, I've been in the system, I've done it. And I've 100%, seen what it is. And, 100%. You know, and I've seen exactly... You know, I've been I've been in the system, so there's not a better person to, to to show these next generation of players. Exactly, exactly, mate. And I think I think you know your 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 voice and your insight will have a mm. can can have mm. and will have a really yeah. a really uh, poignant impact on mm. young yeah. players who, as you're saying, that people mm. will naturally feel like this. And if you're able to exactly. guide them and use yeah. you know, your experience, I think that that will be exactly. s- it's such a an incredible asset to have at such a young age yeah. because yeah. not only at 15, you you know, there's so much going on. Like you are biologically <laughs> yeah. growing up, like your brain yeah, doesn't exactly. develop as, exactly. a, as, as, a, as a man anyway, I think to like 24, yeah. 25. So exactly. it's crazy. Exactly. It's, it's absolutely yeah. mental. So yeah, yeah mate, 100%. <laughs> and I, I do want to yeah. talk about that more um, yeah. a bit later on. Yeah. One thing yeah. I found mm. really, really interesting um, mm. when I was when I was you know researching into uh, your mm. career is championship mm. manager, <laughs> and you knew I was going to get onto at some point. I was waiting for that one. And mate, this is this is something that I was just I was because because I, I, I was I was researching. I was like, what is this? What is this all about? Championship manager? Because I'm 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 22, so I di- I didn't have yeah. this when I was. Uh, yeah. I was I got to that's how I was uh, how how old I was when uh, when that game was out. But like, yeah, <laughs> it's so interesting looking into this because, mate, on FIFA yeah. when I'm on career mode, it's <laughs> you're always you're, you're always looking. I'm always searching yeah. FIFA twenty potential like young players, yeah. like because obviously you want to sign them on the cheap and then mm. they become like really mm. good for your club. It's, it's so, exactly championship manager. So That's championship exactly it. Manager, it was a game. So... <laughs> it's brilliant, mate, honestly. <laughs> 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 it's brilliant. You so... know, I, I, I came to know about championship manager after um, um, when, I, when I was at Lille. I didn't know about it. Then one of my mates came up to me and said, look, have you heard about this game, championship manager? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, you are unbelievable, Lenny. I said, what are you talking about? So I went and bought the game and then my stats are just insane in it absolutely insane and I was the best in the world basically so they they created this computer game based on what they do is is um, for example look at your career to where you will be and how you are and you know create into, into this game where because of I was rising and I was um, um, what's it called I was just bursting into the scene yeah. they expected me to be the next you know so that's how he was created and I was the best mate. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> mate, honestly, that must have been so bloody cool. Like, yeah, yeah it's oh, good. Is, it's but, good. but it's that, it's such a, a fascinating dynamic in the fact that it's, mm. it's mm. virtual reality versus yeah, virtual reality. Exactly. Reality. Exactly. You know, yeah. and how and did that played a little bit of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It played a little bit of pressure on me actually because um, what I used to do because of the stats in the game, I was, um, uh, uh, um, was it called fast? I was like 19, you know, um, speed was 19, you know, my heading was like 17. And it was max like 20. Was exactly 20, max was 20. So I was like 19, 18, 19, 18, 19, 20, 17. So it's unbelievable stats. So when I was playing in my actual game, I used to, it was so confusing because I used to say, right, 
the game, the stat says I'm this. So I've got to be as quick as this to make sure that I'm producing this. Um, Alex, it was confusing for me. Absolutely oh my, confusing. Mate, I, honestly, yeah. I've, I've literally <laughs> listened to you. I'm trying to piece together. <laughs> yeah, you know, so I'm, my, my opponent used to tease me as I said, oh, um, speed said 19, but you're not going to do that with me today. Like, they still used to, I said, well, I bet you I will. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to beat you. So, and I would just do it. And I said, I told you I'd do it. So, yeah, they, <laughs> they would talk about it while we're in the game. And, you know, and it was confusing because I was always comparing my stats to my natural game, to my real, real life game. Um, but listen. Which I think is another said, natural thing to happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I, I can go on about pressure, pressure, pressure. Life is pressure itself, Alex. Yeah. Whatever any source of life, you've got to just take it and know what you're doing, have a plan, have a proper identity of where you're heading and just stuck to it. But life is pressure anyway. The person that's doing a, a um, nine to five job at a Sainsbury's um, uh, um, supermarket is pressure. He has to deliver. Yeah. It's pressure itself. So there's nothing, you know, um, it's, it's, um, uh, that's just me. That's just me. I, I, I think that, you know, life is pressure itself. So therefore, you know, you just got to do what you have to do. Simple. 100%. But yeah, it did, it did, it did, it did um, had a little bit of confusion in my game. <laughs> did you, did you play it yourself? Oh yeah, I loved it, mate. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to buy myself, I used to be this Manchester United and then just win the Champions League, win the league, win everything. <laughs> <else>. <laughs> and put myself inside as well, mate. Buy myself and, I used to get myself on a cheap and then, um, yeah, just make sure that <laughs> sell me on after for a very expensive money. Mate, so, yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is crazy. That is Brilliant. crazy. Brilliant. So was this, was this prior, was this during Millwall? This yeah, was yeah, yeah. This yeah. was during Millwall. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. was during Millwall. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I still play it now. <laughs> do you? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So is it, is, it, is, it, is it still called Championship Manager? No, now it's called Football Manager. Football Manager. Ah, oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, okay. At my time, it was Championship Manager, but now it's called uh, Football Manager. Yeah. Do you uh, yeah. play FIFA now or no? Not really. I'm more of yeah, Football Manager, mate. Football Got Manager. Sixers. Can't get yeah, enough of it. Sixers. Yeah, that's it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate, mate. Now that was the perfect time to play it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> so after Millwall, yeah. talk to me about yeah. your career and. Next, the, yeah. the the following clubs and yeah, yeah. So after yeah, so after Millwall, at the age of nineteen, um, I didn't renew my contract with Millwall. Um, we didn't agree to be renewed. So um, luckily, there was a club in Spain, Cadiz. They yeah. knew about my situation and um, they contacted my, my agent and said, "Look, we will have him any day." You know, so I went there, signed a four year contract. Yeah. One of the best players in the club, and um, you know. Um, I had a house looking over the beach. I was playing in Spain. Beautiful weather, wow. beautiful food, lovely football. What more do you want as a human being? Yeah. However, three months after my contract, I started being depressed. I started feeling isolated. I started feeling bitter. I started feeling hurt because what happened was um, I was in Spain and all my peers who were here were starting to kick on in terms of playing in the premiership week in, week out, playing in the championship week in, week out. Yeah. And even though I was playing there also, but I was, um, it was like I was a forgotten man. You know, I was not, um, um, you know, no one was hearing about me because th those days social media wasn't like now, you know. So yeah. um, I was I was a lost cause and I felt that I failed in my own country and I had to be shipped out to Spain. So what I, would, what I was doing was I used to, um, go in the physio room and just take as much as tablets that I could just to um, just to end my own life, Alex. I uh, just didn't want to be here. So um, I was so depressed. I was so hurt with life. I was so bitter. I used to sweat at night. I used to have so many nightmares. At How night. old were you at this sleep. point? I was 19. I was yeah. 19 at this time. Yeah, and it was horrible. It was horrible. So um, one day I, you know, overdosed myself and, um, you know, um, one normally there's a there's a guy that used to come and pick me up to go training. So he turned up this time, and normally I'd just come downstairs. And um, he was knocking, the, you know, calling my phone. I didn't answer, so he said, "This is not normal." China is the first person to wait for me here. So I'll call it faith. He just came upstairs, knocked on the door. Nobody answered again, and he just broke the door in. And then luckily, when he did, he found me on the floor, 
And paramedics came, took me to the hospital. So I woke up from the hospital and I thought, I hated myself. And I thought, this wasn't me. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a bubbly guy. I'm full of life. I've, I've, yeah. You know, I'm a chirpy person. So why am I doing this? So I was, you know, you don't realise until you're in a certain situation. So after that, um, I just said, this will never happen again because this is definitely not me. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, but all this time that was happening, I was scared to speak out because... I felt that if I spoken, I'll be looked upon as I'm weak. Yeah. So I was really afraid. I was a very, very, very private person. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a very fat private person. Everything I bottle in and stuff, and just hold it in. Yeah. But looking back now, I think I was weak for not speaking out. If you know what I mean. Of because course, of course, and I, you, I, I, and I yeah, understand why yeah. you may have that yeah. perspective. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. back then, it yeah. was. I, <laughs> Mate, I do not blame you for not speaking out because any no one spoke out. No one yeah. spoke out. Yeah. And it, it was it was massively frowned upon, especially yeah. as a as a as as a man. The yeah, exactly. the the expectation is is mm. that you are fully in Strong in control and, of yeah. your yeah. your emotions. Yeah. Um yeah. you know, as men we're leaders. Um mm-hmm. and you know, we, we don't we don't we don't have emotions, we don't get emotional. That's and it's mm. it's the complete opposite, and that's yeah, yeah. one thing I'm really happy about. That mm. we're in this climate today where men mm. are able to speak. You mm. know, so I I completely mm. understand the way that yeah. you may see yourself as being weak, but yeah. you you were only just uh, I mean, you tell me if otherwise, but you were from from what I can see a product of of that toxic environment yeah. and that. Yeah. Yeah. You you yeah. you felt like you had to internalize it and and bottle mm-hmm. it in and um, yeah absolutely and that is absolutely. the most you know unhealthy thing to do. It's like absolutely. I heard this analogy where it's um where it's like a thought is like a, a bottle of water. You know, if you yep. pick it up and yep. and you hold it out in front of you, what for mm-hmm. like a, a minute, it's weightless to you. It's not that heavy. Yeah. But if yep. you hold that bottle of water for an hour, two hours, yep. it is starts to get very, 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 <laughs> very heavy. heavy. Yeah, it gets very heavy. And, Absolutely. And you know, I think I think what you went through speaks volumes mm. about the climate at that time and mm. and the attitudes towards mental health and yeah. um the the lack of support for for yeah. players as mm. well. Mm. Um Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's changed now, as you said, it's changed now, but then it was very difficult. And um, for me, what I would advise anybody, you know, wherever you're going through, speak to, you have to speak to someone, speak to your cat, your dog, your mom, your dad, yeah. your girlfriend, your wife, your friend, whoever, but just speak out. Um, it was, it was um, for me, um, it was difficult. It was difficult. And then after that, what I did was, because I couldn't speak the language then, so I said to my club, they need to get me a tutor to yeah. know the language, to integrate with the, with the players and everything else. And, I learned Spanish within eight months, and now wow. I can still speak fluent. <laughs> exactly. Hola, ¿qué tal? Que es bien, cabrón. Yo hablaba muy bien español. Eh, sí, uh, un poco, un poco. Ah, yo hablaba español también. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually a cool Spanish. My mum never oh, right, spoke okay. to me as a okay. as a kid in Spanish, so I don't. I'm not fluent <laughs> in the language, but we, right, we, we, right. we can go as far as far as that. Um, yeah. yeah. But, but so, yeah, yeah so, I mean that's you know, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's mm. mate. Honestly, I I when I'm I'm piecing everything together, and honestly, mm. I I I can't imagine what you were what you were going mm. through. And I think another thing of mm. perhaps being abroad did and away from everything else, and as you say, you're exactly. looking through yeah. your 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 peers through a TV screen, yeah. you're reading the newspaper, saying, yeah. "Oh, they're doing this, yeah. that, and the other." It's soul yeah. destroying. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, as I always say to you, it, it wasn't any grudge or jealousy or anything. It's just looking at them where they are and what's what, what's happening with me. That's, and that's it's, the sort it's, of thing it's that, that comparison. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so I felt like a forgotten man, and um, so, but yeah, it was part of that. I've learned from that, and then woke yeah. up from hospital, and um, that helped. So things eased up a little bit, and. Um, from there, I uh, my girlfriend came over, and my best friend. I spoke to my best friend. I said, "Look, I need you to be seeing me more often." And mm-hmm. um, I didn't tell him. Nobody knew. Nobody knew what happened. 
And it's funny, you know, until about two years ago, that's when people knew that, you know, um, that's what I was going through when I when my autobiography came out. So not even my mom, not my dad, not my best friend, or not my girlfriend at the time, or my wife. So um, none of them knew until two years ago when wow. my autobiography came out. Yeah. So, and I only, you know, all these years that was going past, I only let go of some of the frustration when I published my book. It was like a therapy for me. Absolutely. Is that very, so, very cathartic? Uh, absolutely, mate. Honestly. It's, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, thank God I'm still here today to be able to speak to you, mate. <laughs> uh, mate, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and I I applaud you on yeah. on having you know on, on being willing to to speak about that and mm-hmm. and, and let mm-hmm. that out because it takes so much so mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. much to be able to to let all of that all of that go mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and to be able to write a book on that and yeah. and publicize mm-hmm. your your personal very private mm-hmm. struggles and yeah and it I can't imagine what it takes to be able to to get to that point where you think, okay, now is time. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I, 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 I applaud you, and I, I, yeah, I, thanks, I, I, I thank you for being willing to yeah. no, to speak okay, and right. share no because yeah. your story and 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 your voice uh, mm-hmm. can be imperative in in helping mm. thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of other people who feel the same way to to speak about mm. their, absolutely their absolutely problems. and that was the motivation of doing the book because i had two motivations of doing it was one was to tell my story to the world what's happened to me the deal at liverpool all my football career what's happened to me and what is the truth and the second thing was to help the next generation of human beings not yeah. just footballers but anybody and is it so rewarded alex when i walk on the street and people start me and say look your book saved my life, you. I said, oh, how is he? And he just told, when I read that chapter, this is what he says. This is how I used to live, how I should live my life. This is what I should do. And I said, you know what, mate? Thank you so much. That's all I wanted to hear. That's all I wanted to hear. You made my day. And it's just re- so rewarding hearing that from, from, from people, you know. And it's it's like um, exactly what I wanted. What I wanted. Yeah. Incredible, incredible, amazing! Yeah. And where um, and yeah. where can people find that book? You can they can they can find it on my website, which is um, uh, channelsamba.co.uk, and um, they can get it signed as well by myself. Amazing, amazing! And yeah. I really hope yeah. someone. Oh, I'm on doing... Amazon, Amazon as well, and or, Amazon. Uh, WH Smith, WH Smith, and um, Waterstone as well. So all the bookstores, yeah. Mate, well, I really hope somebody listens to pick it up. And uh, mate, after talking to you, I would yeah. honestly. I'd love to read it, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, very interesting. Very I'm, interesting. I'm, 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 I'm going to have so many more questions after that. <laughs> after <I read. laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, man, it's, 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 yeah. it's not easy. It's tough. Mental health is such yeah. a big topic at the moment. You know, there's some, some people who are who are stuck inside of their homes and they rely on their, on their jobs mm-hmm. to, as, as mm-hmm. their own escapism to, to get out and... Unfortunately, that that can only yeah. paper over the cracks, and a lot of people are staying at home right now, and they're perhaps yeah. overthinking and they're not active. And um, mm-hmm. you know, my ambition mm-hmm. for this podcast is is to, and so, and it's it's the same with Pete. It's to yeah. to humanize footballers and mm-hmm. and to to shed light and be a vehicle for for helping uh, people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great platform, mate. It's a great platform. You need more of these, mate. You know, because we are human beings. Footballers are human beings, and people forget, you know, tend to forget that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And yeah. what's yeah. currently in the media at the moment just doesn't help. It just doesn't mm. help at all, mm. at mm. all. Exactly. But, yeah. mate, I've got to say, Pete was. Um, yeah. I told I told Pete that you were a United fan, and you wasn't happy. <laughs> he wasn't. I'm he a United was, fan. Mate, he's a he, he he's a gooner. I'm a Chelsea fan. Oh, is he? Oh, <laughs> go away, you two. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what did you make of United before this uh, this uh, pandemic? Were you were you soul oh. in? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I was, I was, I was with him, and um, I'm still with him. I'm still with him. I think um, Ron wasn't building a date, and um, we've yeah. got to realise we're in transition period now. Yeah. We've dominated. We've dominated this league for many years when Sir Alex was around. Many, oh, yeah. many, many years. So it's normal. Let, let others 
you know, let's give the others a little bit of chance now because we've been dominating for too long. Yeah. <laughs> <So> <laughs> they, can, they, can, they can go and fight with the trophies for okay, now, but mate, we'll come back. Okay, we'll come okay. Back. We'll yeah, come back. I mean, yeah. as much as I hate to say, you know, United are, you know, they're a massive, massive club. And, exactly. and for me exactly. personally, you know, I want, I want the best, you know, all yeah. all the classic teams in Premier League, the best teams to be up there and fighting. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. as much as 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 much as I've I've enjoyed the uh, let's say the dip in form for the past seven years of United, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, come been, back whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, it's not been easy watching them at times, but um, I'm sure we'll be back. I'm sure we'll be fine, and I think I just hope they give Polly time um, yeah. because yeah, I just hope that they give him time because I think he can turn it around. He yeah. knows the club inside out. He's been there for a very long time. And, um, you know, we'll be fine. As I said, it's just a bit of a transitional period. And, it, and it's going to take long. It's yeah. going to take long. you you just got to look at Liverpool, you know, when uh, look at Liverpool before and look at them now. Yeah. So it took time. It took time. So still not getting the trophy, though. I hope not. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I know, I know. Could you imagine, <laughs> bro, the one year they, they, they could win it is like a global <laughs> pandemic, like the first pandemic in a hundred years. Like, what? I was saying to, I was saying to my mate yesterday and I said, um, what is wrong with your, with your club? The time that you were about to win it, Gerard slipped. Oh, uh, yeah, slipped. against Chelsea and as well. You lost that. You lost that, that trophy. Now, the time that you're actually going to win it, global pandemic bloody oh, hell you mate. guys are cursed mate it, mate they actually are and it's it's so so fun it's comedic it's, it really is comedic it is. oh mate oh, it is funny it is funny yeah. how do you reckon that this um, this uh, this whole football situation is going to be started are they going to are they going to carry be, on the league in the summer or? I, I think so I think so personally yeah. I think it's, it's, um, they've got to finish the league because um it wouldn't be fair on Liverpool, to be honest, even though I bloody hate them. But um, <laughs> it, it's only fair that we finish the league, even if yeah. they play in behind closed doors. And, you know, there's not many games that's left anyway. So even if they half that as well, but it's got it's got to be finished. Yeah. You can't just um, and leave it as that or scrub, the, or scrub the season and start again next season. It's, it doesn't make sense. It's going to be so interesting though, isn't it? Because like, <laughs> it almost, yeah. I mean... Every every team's in the same boat, but some teams are on different yeah. spells of forms, and it could exactly. completely exactly. It could change exactly. so much. It's really interesting. I'm actually fascinated to see what happens yeah. with that. It's going to be really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Go I, I, I yeah. was I was yeah. thinking of this as you were talking about United, but have you ever have you spoke to to Wayne since? Have you ever met Sir Alex or any? Um, no, 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 no. Every now and then, occasionally, that uh, we we'll probably bump into each other. So, yeah, but, um, no, no, yeah, so. Uh, kids' day. <laughs> I hope. I hope. I hope one day you're able to to, to yeah, catch up yeah. and you have the opportunity. Yeah, to, absolutely. <laughs> that must be quite absolutely. nice to to kind of bring it back to yeah. to you know. He probably he probably forgot forgot about that day when he had me on a headlock in the changing room. So ah. he probably won't remember that. <laughs> he's, a, he's a strong lad, I'll tell you that, mate. <laughs> hey, that, mate. That age, mate honestly, <laughs> honestly, the, the the first time I watched uh, Rooney live, I was just like, oh my god. He's, he's, he's a baller, isn't he? He's, he's a, a tank. He's a tank. He's a tank. And he can play. And a lot of people think, you know, um, you know, I, I don't think he get the credit that he deserves much. But he's, you know, he's the best goal scorer for United and best goal scorer for England. Come on. Yeah. You know. Exactly. You know, um, and, and, it, and it saddens me when people, you know, have a go at him, that this and that and that. But he, he's, a, he's a legend, mate. He's done it all. And yeah. um, he, his record speaks for itself. Are you um, in? Um, are you in any, any contact with some of the young England players? And yeah, yeah, some of my mates that um, I still talk to and stuff. So yeah, there's few of them that we still keep in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I was yeah. wondering. I wonder who's going to break into the Euros team next year. <laughs> well, um, there's a lot. Of, there, yeah, there's a lot of ones they're talking about. All I would advise is, you know, we need to stop hyping these young players because um, they haven't done anything yet. They yeah. haven't done anything, and sometimes it can go the wrong way. And um, for me, luckily, at least, I know I had three goals in life, which was I remember at the age of 13, 14, I was watching the Victory Shield. It was called, it was England, Scotland, the home nations, England, yeah. Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. And um, I was watching it, and I just said, Oh, I want to do what they're doing. And straight away, I said, Right, three goals, 
want to play for England, want to play for Gambia, either Gambia senior level yeah. or England at senior level and become a professional footballer. And I did all three of them. Now, how many people can say that they've achieved their lifetime goal? Right. Not many. So it looks yeah, like yeah. my career was a little bit of fail, but because of the expectation that was put on me yeah. at that young age, yeah. so you look at it as, right, he hasn't. But, you know, the, the three goals that I set out to do, I achieved all three of them. So any person That is the most happy. important exactly. thing. Exactly. Mate, exactly. it has been an absolute <laughs> pleasure. No problem. Talking no problem, to you, mate. mate. Really enjoy speaking to you, mate. No problem. Anytime, mate. Really enjoy that. Thank you for all of your insight. No um no you know, problem. I hope I hope some some, some of our listeners take take some yeah. real value from this. And <laughs> um <laughs> mate, feel free to plug any of your, you know, yeah. uh your book, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> Go for it, mate. Go for it. Towards yours. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, they can they can get it as I said, um double H Smith. Amazon and um, uh, Waterstone and uh, churnosamba.co.uk and um, yeah so you know what my last advice would, would be just to any people just work hard whatever you do just put your heart on it and just do 210% that's the most important thing once you've done that the reward is insane and you'll always get back what you put in simple as me there's no shortcuts in life and that's my advice to any human being